Welcome to the second Keyful tutorial on developing single page applications using ext.js. In this tutorial, we'll go through what a single page application looks like and how we can code ext to create a single page application. First, as we said in the previous tutorial, single page applications all take place through the browser. Now I've already set up some code for a single page application that we can immediately fire as soon as my server is running. So, without further ado, I open up my web browser, I go to the location of my single page app. Um, single page applications tend to only have one link that you have to go to. They load everything else depending upon what the user clicks on, but there's really one sort of bootstrap, sort of launch page that we go to, and this URL is the URL that I know my single page application is going to be running under. So I put it in, and I hit enter. Now, what you'll see is all of the stuff that came on the screen didn't actually come from some sort of server-generated page. What happened, and we'll walk through this in a second, is that as soon as the web page loaded, it knew, oh, I'm running ext, and then I told it where my starting point is for my single-page application. And then after that, it just kind of launched and did whatever I coded it to do. In this case, it's a very simple example where I display a phone number, a name, an email, city, state, and then an additional email address. This is really what a single page application is, is that I go to a link and then it loads whatever it needs to. This is a very naive single page application since there are no links that I can really click on or much to do on it, but it really does demonstrate that there is one URL that I go to that everything else comes from. So, if we're to look at the code of our single page application, this is what it would look like. My HTML file, like I said, is very simplistic. First, I load the ext library, which is what this line corresponds to, and then I give it a bootstrap, a launching point, that all of my JavaScript is going to take place on. In some of the more complicated web page applications that we've written, um, this file can be, you know, pretty long. Um, so the version that we'll see here is a much more stripped down, simplified version of what a single page application should look like. And then after it processes that line, really that's it as far as the server is concerned. It doesn't have to really generate any HTML at this point. Everything is taking place really in my browser right now. This is what my sort of simplified bootstrap looks like and we'll walk through some of the different parts of this to understand what's really going on here. So the first line, the ext on ready, says when you're ready to load, do anything on the page, call this function. And this is what's going to kick off everything else that happens on this page. The first thing that I do in here is define just a very simple ext class. Um, JavaScript is not a classical object-oriented language. Um, it's actually a prototype-based language. So there's a lot of syntactic sugar that ext tries to fit in there to make it look like a object-oriented language. But there's really a lot of things that are going on behind the scenes that we don't even see. Um, this is what a typical ext class definition will look like, is that I say, OK, this is going to be the name of my class, and these are all the things inside of my class. Uh, for instance, this config says, OK, my primer address class is going to have these different config options. Um, it sets up getters and setters for us, which is really nice because JavaScript doesn't actually have uh, private, public, um, or protected notions. In JavaScript, everything is public. So we have to make sure that we have really well-defined getters and setters. And if we do need to make private and protected member variables or functions, those really have to be well documented. Otherwise, there's really no guarantee to the developer that what they're going to be doing is actually allowable by your code. 